salvation and freedom and rescue from this world is open to everybody. It doesn't exclude a single person. No matter who you are, what you've done, if you call on Jesus, he'll meet you with arms wide open. And there will be a party in heaven in honor of your heart being found. In Luke 15, Jesus tells the parable of the shepherd with a hundred sheep. And he loses one of the sheep. So the shepherd leaves the 99. He leaves the 99 sheep to go and find the one. And when he finds it, he picks it up, he puts it on his shoulders and he takes it home and he gathers with his friends and his neighbors and he celebrates the finding of his one sheep. Luke 15, seven says, in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people who don't need to. So maybe you're the one person today. Maybe you're the one who Jesus is chasing down, who he's looking for, who he's ready to find and ready to save and give you a peace that is unshakable, a comfort and a security that is unshakable. And if you are, and if, you're, and if that's you and you're here, come up and see us afterward. If, you're, if that's you and you're online, then just leave a comment. Leave a comment and say, yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm ready for Jesus today. And there, there are people here who are, who are waiting for that, who are ready to direct message you and just guide you through doing that. But I want to remind you that the discomfort that we're feeling is not a bad thing. The discomfort itself is not bad. How we choose to respond to discomfort can be good or bad, but the discomfort itself, the discomfort isn't bad. If you, go to, if you go to God and you say, God, I really would like an oak tree. And he says, okay, here you go. And you say, oh God, what, what's this? And he says, well, that's an acorn. And through process, that will become an oak. It's because our God is a God of process. He doesn't put oak trees on the earth. He puts acorns. The acorn is easily washed away. It's easily trampled and uprooted and swept away. But through process, it roots itself into the ground and it grows and it endures the wind and the waves and the water. It endures everything that the earth, that the world can throw at it. Through process, it becomes immovable and it becomes unshakable. And if you're feeling discomfort, then take heart because that's part of this holy transformation that our God, our awesome God, that we serve this God of process is taking us through. That discomfort is a good thing. Now, how we choose to respond to it can be good or bad, but take heart because the comfort itself, the discomfort is a good thing, is part of a holy process of taking us more from acorn and more into oak, taking us more into all that we're meant to become. So the discomfort, the discomfort is good. A story that really helped me to understand the positive role that discomfort can have in our lives is about a king and a bird. So this king was visiting foreign kingdoms to make friends, to build good or poor, to take gifts, and one of the, one of the kings returned a gift to him. And it was two birds, and these were the most beautiful, amazing birds that he had ever seen. So he took these birds back to his kingdom. He had a huge enclosure built for these birds to where he could see them flying right outside his castle window. And a couple of days went by and he noticed that one of the birds was flying around, doing what the bird is meant to do, is to fly and soar through the air. But the other bird, it wouldn't move. It was just sitting on one branch and it wouldn't move from the branch. And it didn't move in days. So being concerned for the bird, the king called on all of the veterinarians, all of the experts in the land to come out and see what was wrong with the bird. So they came out, they looked at the bird and they said, we, we just can't find anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with your bird. So in a last desperate effort, the king called on a farmer. Now, let's pause here a minute because I want to hear, just consider it. What would you do if you were the farmer and the king called on you and he said, okay, there's nothing wrong with the bird, but it won't fly. And that's your task. You're tasked with, get this bird to fly. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just on the branch. Get it to fly. 
Take a second, ponder it. Online, tell me in the comments, what would you do? You gotta go to work to see if you can get the bird to fly. Well, how would you do it? So the king comes back and he, he looks out the window to see the bird flying. The next morning, the bird is flying around. And he calls the farmer in and he says, how did you do it? And the farmer said, well, it was really pretty easy. I just cut the branch that the bird was sitting on. <laughs> now, I can really relate to the bird here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, my branch that I was just sitting on, I was, I was fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me, but I was comfortable. All right, well, that branch, whack, got wiped out, cut out from underneath my feet. Can you relate to it? Yeah. Online, let me know. Can you guys relate to that? So <laughs> that's, that's what this has felt like. And I can really relate to the bird in that. Now, when this happens, we have two options. And just like the bird, the bird had two options. The bird was either going to rise to the occasion, spread its wings and fly, or it was going to fall to the ground. It was going to fall with the branch. And that's our two options. Right now, in 2020, we're at a time where everyone's branch, in one way or another, has been wiped out, has been cut. Some form of comfort, of security, has been shaken, has been removed, has been cut. The farmer came along and cut the branch. And we sometimes, I don't want to speak for you, but sometimes I feel like I'm just experiencing that free fall. Like, I, I was fine. I was sitting on this branch. It got cut. Now I'm in a free fall. My soul is just <laughs> in a free fall. And I want to do as much flying as possible. But 2020, our branch has been cut. So what I want to do, what I would like us to do, is just take some time to take stock. How is your soul doing with this? How is your soul doing? Because a branch has been cut. It's been wiped out. It's been removed. Every single person in the world has experienced what this bird experienced when the farmer came and cut the branch. But how are you doing? How is your soul doing with this? And if I'm being honest, sometimes I, I'm doing some falling, sometimes I'm doing some flying. Sometimes it just depends on the week. Sometimes it depends on the day. Sometimes it depends on the hour. Maybe I'm doing some falling, maybe I'm doing some flying the next hour. But, but the branch has been cut. So let's take stock. How are you doing? How are you doing with that? Do you find these days that your soul is falling? Do you feel overwhelmed with anger, bitterness, frustration, fear, anxiety? Are you feeling the weight of all those things? Or do you find yourself walking out, leaving the comfort, walking out in faith to Jesus and, being, and flying, being grown more fully into your greater potential? The reality is, well, it's probably a little bit of both, depending on the time, depending on the day. Right? But we want to do as much flying as possible. Right? The branch has been cut, and we find ourselves in a similar situation as Peter when Jesus called him out of the boat to walk over the water out to where he was. Now, Peter was pretty brave. He did it. My reaction probably would have been something like, all right, Jesus, I'm still trying to process what you're doing right now because I, we thought you were a ghost walking out on the water. And you realize, right, you realize, I, I, want, I want to do, I want to, Jesus, I want to do what you asked me to do. But you realize that you're asking me to step out of the boat, the only thing that's keeping me from dying and drowning in this storm, and walk out to you? Is that, oh, yeah, okay. All right. Well, if that's what you want me to do, Jesus, that's, that's what I'll do. But certainly uncomfortable, right? It's like, really, I'm, I'm, I'm okay in the boat right here, right? The boat is keeping me up above the water, up above the waves. You want me to step out of the boat? So <laughs> that would have been my, my response to all that anyway. But just like we have two options, just like the bird had two options, Peter had two options. He was either going to rise to the occasion and walk out in faith to Jesus, or he was going to fall in. And just like we may be experiencing a reality, well, we, we're doing a little bit of both. Sometimes we're falling, 
Sometimes we're flying. And Peter flew for a little bit. Well, he walked on the water for a little bit. And then he fell. But why did he fall? He fell because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he looked at the storm. And when the storm was not only going on around him, but now the storm was within him, that's when he fell. And what did Jesus have to say to this? It was so loving and so tender. It was, Peter, why did you doubt? You of little faith. All right, so we can fall, or we can rise to the occasion and walk out in faith to Jesus. Which isn't easy to do. Walking away from the boat, well, that's, that's pretty scary. But the comforts that we find in this world, the branch or the boat, well, the branch is going to get cut at some point. In one way or another, the branch will get cut. And the boat, at some time, in some way or another, the boat's going to drift away. And it's when we become overwhelmed by the storm that we're shaken. And that's when we fall. It's that overwhelm of the storm that causes us to fall. Because the branch gets cut, the boat drifts away, but Jesus is right there. Jesus is there. So, if you're going to struggle in all this, which I'm not sure there's much way around that. I've certainly been struggling with it. With losing this comfort. Things taken away. Pressures added. Responsibilities added. Trying to make decisions for myself and my family, business, and future with absolute uncertainty. That's, that's been tough. But what I'm trying to do, what I'd like to extend to you this morning, is if you're going to struggle, struggle in the direction of Jesus. Don't struggle back in the direction of the boat. Struggle out to Jesus. If the boat left and you've fallen in and you're struggling, well, struggle that way. That's where Jesus is. Don't struggle that way. That's leaving. That comfort's gone. And it may not come back. And that's okay because Jesus, our rock, is over there. Struggle in that direction. Let's look at, let's look at uh, Philippians, in Philippians 4, let's look at verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read that for just a second. This says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. So a falling soul is heavy. It's holding on to all of the weight of the fear and the uncertainty, the anxiety, the depression that may come from that. It's holding on to it. And it makes it heavy. It's a falling soul has taken the storm. It's allowed the storm to go from going on around you to going on within you. So a falling soul is heavy. A flying soul, we can see right here, well, it's light. It's quiet. It's at rest because of its trust in Jesus. A soul that is flying is leaning into the discomfort, is walking out toward Jesus. The falling happens when we struggle back in the direction of the branch, or we hold on to the branch and it's being cut and we're falling with the branch, right? Or we struggle back in the direction of the boat. That's, that's when the falling happens. That's when the falling of the soul is happening. The flying is, okay, the comfort is gone. I'm not going to try to hold on to it. I'm going to lean into the discomfort because Jesus, that's where you are. And if you've called me that way, that's where I'll go. So I'm going to lean into that and walk closer and closer to Jesus, to walk out in faith to Jesus. Remember what Jesus said to Peter, you of little faith, walk out in faith to Jesus. And that's where our faith is made stronger. That's where we're grown into our greater potential, the more mature, redeemed, complete version of ourselves. That's how we do that. That's a flying soul. So be like a fish. Now, here's what I mean by that. Suppose you go and you catch a fish from the ocean, and you cook it and eat it. Well, 
what do you have to do to it? You season it. You put salt on it, right? Now, this thing was marinating in salt water its whole life. But you still have to season it. You still have to put salt on it. It was in the world, but not of the world. It didn't take its world inside. Right? Guys, we are citizens of heaven, not here. We live here. Don't take it in. Don't be of this place. Right? Don't be of this place. Our citizenship is heaven. We live here, but don't take it in. You don't have to let all of the fear, the assault of the enemy, who's the prince of this world, you don't have to let all of that inside of you. Let the storm go on around you. That's fine. Let it go on around you. Don't take it in. Don't let the storm go on inside of you. Right? That's how we hit the brakes on the falling and do more of the flying, the leaning into the discomfort. So be like the fish in that way. Be like the fish. Live in the world. Don't be of the world. Right? Don't take it in. You don't have to take it in. Fish doesn't come out and taste salty because it absorbed all the salt water that it lived in its whole life. Well, be like that. Be like the fish in that way. Because when Peter fell, he took his eyes off of Jesus. The storm that was going on around him went on within him. So be like the fish. Let's look at Philippians 4, verse 8 now. Here's what this says. And now, brothers, as I close this letter, let me say one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine, the good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about. Okay. So let's turn off the bad. Let's turn on more of the good. Right? Think about it like a faucet. Right? If there's a faucet over here and it's pouring out the bad things that are fueling a spirit of fear, of panic, of worry, of anxiety, turn that thing off. Stop pouring gasoline on the assault of fear that the enemy is launching against your soul. Stop fueling that. Turn that faucet off. If you walked into a friend's house and you found them frantically mopping water that was all over the floor, you're like, what happened? Oh, I left the faucet on. It overflowed. Oh, okay, let me help you. And you grab a mop and you start mopping too. But then you hear water and you're like, well, did you turn the faucet off? No, I'm just trying to deal with the, with the mess as fast as I, okay, okay, hold on. We got to put the mop down for a second and we got to go turn the faucet off and then we'll deal with this. That's the first thing we need to do here, to hit the brakes on the falling and do more flying. Turn the faucet off that's pouring just bad, negative, and fueling this assault of fear. Turn that off, and then we'll deal with the effect that it's had on you, on your soul. Turn it off first, though. Go and turn it off first. I find myself so often, I'm just trying to deal with the mess. I'm just trying to deal with how my soul is. And it's like, wait, hold on. Stop. Go turn the faucet off first. And then, and then we'll deal with it. That's the first thing we got to do. Go and turn the faucet off. Turn off the bad. Turn on the good. Guys, take in more good stuff. Take in scripture. Be aware. Think about what podcasts are you, are you listening to? What kind of emails are you receiving? Right? What hits your inbox? What do you allow into your brain, into your heart? by what you allow into your eyes and in through your ears. Your brain will hold whatever it is that you allow in there. But what is that fueling? Is it fueling that spirit of fear? Or is it, is it fueling the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind? The spirit that God has given us. What are we fueling? Right? And that's what we want to think about. And that's what Paul is urging them to think about. Think about what you're thinking about. Think about what you're taking in and what is that fueling and what effect is that having on your soul. So turn off the bad and turn on the good. Now, this may mean you got to go turn off the news. And that's a, could be a scary thing to do, but go, go turn off the news. Guys, if, if you're on social media and you're scrolling through and it's fear and fear and fear and assault on your soul and it's just, it, oh, time out. Mercy, it's more than any soul was ever meant to endure. It is. So turn it off. Turn it off. 
Guys, if you need information, go and get it on your own terms. Go and get it. Search what you need. Go find it. Learn what you need to know and then go on with your day. You don't have to subject yourself to dose after dose of fear-inducing media. Right? We don't have to do it. Go and know what you need to know on your own terms. Keep it on your own terms. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your soul. Be conscious about what you're feeling. In this way, you'll live your life in such a way that you're a light in the darkness for others. That's, that's what Jesus has called us, is the light of the world. And this isn't this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's not, that's not what he's talking about here. This is literally lighting the way in darkness. That's who we are. That's what we're called to do. And we, it, this is a dark time. The darker the time is, the greater is our time to shine. So we need to rise to this occasion and live our lives in such a way where we are light in the darkness, lighting the way for others. That's what we're called to do. So don't wait for this world to bring you comfort. And don't try to hold on to the comfort that you find here. Because the branch will be cut, the boat will drift away, it's falling, it's leaving. Instead, lean into the discomfort. Lean into the discomfort. Walk out in faith to Jesus and be grown more fully into greater potential. And take stock of your soul. Be conscious about what you're thinking about and what you're allowing to fuel the condition of your soul. Be conscious about that. Turn off the bad that fuels fear and turn on the good that fuels the spirit that God has given us. And choose to be made great through this discomfort. Choose that. And if you are going to struggle, struggle in the direction of Jesus, not back in the direction of comfort. Choose to be made great through the discomfort. And in this way, let your life be a light in the darkness for others to follow. Show them the way with your example. Show them the way with your life. So, brothers and sisters, you who are citizens of heaven, go and light the way in this dark time. All right. So, let's take some questions, and then I'd like to pray over all of us, and then we'll dismiss. So, let me grab my phone. This is where questions are going to be. Let's see what we got. Okay. First one says... The discomfort I've been feeling has mostly turned to anger. I, yeah, I can relate to that. I'm not usually an angry person, but I've been so mad lately. How do I overcome this anger? Okay. Well, my first question, if I can counter with a question, is are you on social media? Because is that fueling it? My guess would be that that's what's fueling it. Because it's, it's crazy. It's more than anyone can take. How, how can we scroll through our feed and see all kinds of craziness and fear-inducing things, and then this person says that, and I don't agree with that, so I want to post this, and then I get this comment, and it's just, it's, it's, it's just crazy, <laughs> right? So, if you're on, to deal with the anger, if you're on social media, just, just turn it off for a while, right? And then if you do go back to it, go back on, again, your own terms, Go back to it on your own terms. But just, just turn it off for a while. Just get rid of it. You don't need it. And then the spirit of anger that you're feeling, the question said, I'm not usually an angry person. Well, come against that spirit of anger. Right? Take power, the power that Jesus and the authority that Jesus has given us. Take that up and talk back. Take control of your attitude and talk back to the anger that you're feeling. Talk back to it. Say no. This isn't who I am. I'm not. I don't agree that this anger, that the actions I've done from this anger, I don't agree that that's who I am. And, I, and matter of fact, I come against this anger in the name of Jesus Christ, with the authority of Lord Jesus Christ, and I bind it up and I banish it to the foot of the throne of Jesus to await his righteous judgment. It has no right to me. I'm a child of God. So, stop fueling what's causing the anger and come against the anger. Take, take that power and authority that you have 
from Jesus and stop fueling it. Okay, looked like there were a couple more questions here. Next one. I find myself clinging to things I find that bring me comfort. I can, me too. And when, when those things are taken away, I really struggle. How can I lessen the struggle? Yeah. Yeah. So when, when things are, when comforts are taken away, when we're standing on a branch, when we're standing in a boat, and we're like, yeah, I like it here. <laughs> this is good. There's nothing wrong with me. But I'm... I'm pretty okay right here. When that is wiped out, the very nature of that is disruptive. And it's, it's, it, it's fear-inducing. It, it's, it, makes, it causes us to be shaken. It causes, it causes us to experience fear. How do you lessen the struggle? Well, one way you could lessen the struggle is just like we've been talking about. You know, I'm going to kind of stay on the lines here of Stop fueling the bad, start fueling the good. You know, just be very, very aware of what you're taking in. And be aware of what you're taking in, what that's doing to your soul. Take stock of your soul. If you're struggling, then just pause with that and ask Jesus to meet you there and to help you understand what the struggle is and what the struggle is about. And stop fueling the things that are causing that struggle. But if you do still struggle, I know I've already said this, Say it one more time, if you do still struggle, struggle in the direction of Jesus, not in the direction of the comfort that's been lost, that's causing the struggle. Right. Looks like we may have had one more. Okay. If I have let the storm be within me, how do I remove it? Yeah. Guys, I, I think this one again, it's just the authority, the power that Jesus has given us is absolutely amazing. The same resurrection power flows through your veins. It does. So, if the storm has gotten within you, how do you remove it? One thing, something that I do, is I, I pray the cross of Christ between me and whatever person or storm that I've allowed in. I pray the cross of Christ between us. Say so I just, I, just like this, I say I, just, I bring the cross of Christ between me and this storm that I've allowed within me. And Jesus just remove from me my warfare, return to me my spirit. And that's something that I've learned to pray over and over. If I've let something in, well, I bring the cross of Christ between me and it is so the cross of Christ bridges the gap, right? So remove the warfare. Here, I'm going to send the warfare back and return to me, my spirit, with this bridge of the cross of Christ. So if you let the storm in, then bring the cross of Christ between you and the storm. Send the warfare back, get your spirit back. Right? Is there any more questions? Are we, are we good back there? Anyone from here? Hand? Anything? Looking for hand? Yeah, Chloe. Um, I just saw a picture when you were talking about the bird on the branch. I just saw a picture of, you know, there's a bird on the branch and the branch is getting cut down and it keeps flying up to a higher branch and that keeps getting cut down. So you're just running into these obstacles. And when you're in that place where things are difficult, it's hard to focus on God as much. So in between these obstacles, you're focusing on God, but you really need to rejoice in his love through the difficult times more than ever. So I just felt like I needed to share that picture. Thank you, Chloe. Okay. Let me check this one more time. I think we're all good. Yep. All right. Well, let me just pray over us, and then we'll dismiss. So, Father, Jesus, Lord, thank you that you are our rock-solid anchor in this storm. You are who you are, no matter what craziness we find ourselves in, in this world. And thank you, Jesus, that you have chosen us. You've written us into your story, and you have a place for us in heaven. We are citizens of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And, Father, help us in this great 
feet, this great task that we're called to, and being the light in the darkness. We need you, Jesus. We need you, just more of you. Comfort everyone here, Jesus, all of us. Come for us, Lord. Fill our hearts more and more with you. And help us to every day, every hour, every minute, be the light in the darkness during this dark time. We need you, Jesus. We're following you, and you're the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, thank you guys. We're dismissed. Have a blessed day.